Right, today's video is going to be on my supplements. Oh, I'm getting old. Right, so I thought I would split my supplements up into three sections. I'll call the first section essential, realistically supplements aren't actually essential. So supplements are just there to supplement a healthy diet. So a lot of people rely on supplements to kind of make up for by diet. For example, smashing away protein in when they're not getting good quality meats uh, or taking a million doses of caffeine to get them the energy which should be provided through food. So do not rely on supplements, they are just extra. If you don't have the money, they're probably not really necessary. However, there is a few which I feel are a little bit more beneficial than others. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through that and walk you through what I take anyway. But yeah, healthy diet is the main thing. So, starting off, these are obviously all the supplements that I take. Starting off with the ones that I would not necessarily recommend because I'm not a nutrition expert, but the ones that I would say would probably be best suited for the majority of people. So, first one in terms of sports performance creatine monohydrate. So, Monohydrate is probably the best source of creatine which you can get. Uh, I talked a bit about it in my previous video that you can buy loads of different types of creatine uh, and ones that are really expensive and don't be silly. So just buy your bog standard creatine monohydrate. Bulk powders is the one that I have. I've had my protein in the past, I've had a few other ones but there's no need to spend loads of money on creatine. Uh, so creatine, the reason that we want to take creatine is first of all, because it's highly studied, it's one of the most studied and researched supplements out there that has been proven, it's been backed a number of times to help sports performance, mainly in the short burst, so anaerobic, uh, power, speed, strength based sports. So creatine, is a molecule which is part of what we call ATP, which is our body's short term energy source. So, roughly between around five to nine seconds, they say roughly, is when ATP is going to be used. So, which is why it's perfect for power, for strength, because obviously it's only short burst activities. So, creatine uh, pretty much makes ATP, our short term energy, uh, energy system, last a little bit longer. So, you're pretty much a little bit stronger for a little bit longer. So, creatine is perfect. For that, it also helps a little bit with brain function and nervous system function. There's a few studies on that, so it can make you a little bit smarter. So if you're thick, have it. I'm not really joking, just have it anyway. But in terms of dosages, between three to five grams, the recommended dosage is that because we don't get a lot of it from our diet itself. So majority of creatine we would get from meat. For example, red meat's uh, higher in it but not to the dosage that it would actually be beneficial, which is why we supplement with it. So three to five grams daily, no need to load it. There's people that go on about loading it, taking a higher doses for a certain amount of time and then going back to a maintenance. Do not do that, just stick to five grams is probably just all you need. Next supplement is vitamin D3. So this is another one that I would recommend for majority of people. Uh, so vitamin D3 is what we get from sunlight, so especially if you live in England where you get no sun, unless it's the summer, and we get random heat waves, which is weird. Um, definitely recommend having these, so one capsule a day. So vitamin D3 is great for immune system support and just healthy nervous system function. So we need this, especially like I said, when the weather is great, there isn't a lot of sun. Uh, the only time I don't take this is when either I'm on holiday or when there's a day in England when there's a lot of sun and I'm out in the sun a lot. So I've been out in a bit. So yesterday there was a lot of sun. I got attacked with sunbathing for quite a bit. So I didn't really feel the need for this. Um, so take it on days where there isn't a lot of sunlight. Uh, if you're inside all day, so for example, if you're in an office job, especially in the winter months, you're not going to be getting any sunlight pretty much because you're at work at nine when it's light all the way through the day and then you're going home at 5 o'clock at night when it's dark so you're not going to get any sunlight so vitamin D3 I recommend the recommended serving is 2000 IU per day so just have a little look at the back of the supplement you're taking so this one's 3000 IU uh, so I probably need to take that every other day realistically for the dosage next supplement which I would recommend 
would be a vitamin B12. So I heard about this more because of the game changers. So that was a big topic of discussion in the game changers, uh, saying for vegans they aren't getting the B12 um, nutrition which you need. And uh, there's a big argument about that, which is one of the main points. So one tablet of these a day, the recommended dose I think is 2.4 micrograms. So again, check the back of the pack. Vitamin B12, good for keeping our blood cells healthy, good for helping our nervous system, and good for energy as well. So vitamin B12 is something that you need to supplement with. And then final supplement which I would recommend for certain people as well would be a good quality fish oil. So I say good quality because there is a lot of rubbish out there. So you want to get a good quality fish oil. The reason being is if you don't get the right, right one, your body is going to be getting a lot of oxidated stress, which is unnecessary stress from poor products pretty much. So if you go down to Tesco's and just buy some fish oil off the counter, most likely it's probably going to cause your body some damage. Uh, there's a guy on Instagram called Benny Lifts who's got a good little thing on his highlights reel uh, on fish oil. Uh, he recommends crush, uh, krill oil or Nordic oil, which I have here. Also, Dr. Dean St. Mark has got a little bit on it as well. He's got a good supplement out through Supplement Needs. Very good quality fish oil. He's done a little bit of blood testing and stuff into it. So, fish oil, the reason we need it for healthy heart, healthy brain function, and the main reason that I take it is for an anti-inflammatory for joints pain. So fish oil has been proven to help with joint pain, inflammation, any chronic injuries. And myself, I hate fish. So I do not have any oily fish, no sardines, no salmon, nothing like that. So supplement with this, I definitely recommend if you don't have fish. Even if you do have some fish, you probably aren't getting the recommended dosage of EPA and DHA, which is the fatty acids in uh, fish oil. So EPA uh, helps with cardio support and DHA supports your nervous system. So I think the recommended dose of uh, EPA and DHA was around 5,000 milligrams. So I recommend fish oil. Uh, you probably want around 30 milliliters a day or depending if you take the capsules or not. Just make sure that you get a good quality. So if a krill oil, which is like a little red capsule, Nordic oil, which is a good com good company, or supplement needs is probably one of the best way to go about it. I just have this on a spoon, it tastes like crap, but you've got to get it down here. Right, the next section is a few things which can help you quite a bit, but they also aren't really necessary. Um, but, like I said, they can help you in terms of recovery, performance and health. So. Starting off with the main one which everybody, well nearly everybody who goes to the gym takes. Whey protein or any sort of source of protein. Um, protein powder is a great way of getting extra protein in, especially if you're trying to gain muscle or need a high amount of protein in your diet. So it's simple enough, scoop it into your, your shaker and then you've got a solid 30 to 50 grams of protein like that. So whey protein especially, or whey protein isolate, anything like that, is a very fast acting protein source and is also very high in amino acids, specifically leucine, uh, which is mainly found in dairy products. Again, it's fast acting and fast digesting, so, so it gets into your system nice and quickly to help you recover straight away after workout, which you see a lot of people having it post-workout anyway. Again, whey protein isn't actually essential, you can get good quality sources of protein from other, other sources. Uh, meat is probably the prime example. Uh, especially if you are vegan though, however, supplementing with a protein powder, for example, pea protein, uh, there's rice protein, there's loads of other types of vegan proteins. It's a good way of getting your protein in, so if you are vegan, I probably would recommend having some sort of additional protein powder source, just to make sure that you're getting the right amount of protein in per day to maintain muscle or build muscle, if that's our goal. I also, as well as having whey protein, where is it? I also do sometimes have uh, beef protein, which I've just recently started having. I've seen it in a podcast, um, Modern Wisdom, which is Chris Will's podcast. 
because he was having a lot of digestion problems with having loads of milk protein, whey protein, for example. So he switched to beef. He had the bull powder beef one as well. Uh, so it was very nice. So I tried it just because I was having high amounts of whey protein as well, and I was finding it, I was getting a little bit gassy because of it. So I switched over. So I occasionally have this mainly later in the day if I'm going to have a protein source, just because it's a little bit slower digesting, which is quite good for overnight recovery. So I mix that. Uh, try different protein sources out, there's loads out there, but whey protein is probably the highest in amino acids, which is what you want uh, for recovery. Which takes me on to the next thing, which is essential amino acids, so EAAs, which I've talked about before. Uh, rather than having the branch chain amino acids, which is just three main amino acids, we have the essential amino acids, which has pretty much the full spectrum of the essential ones, which is what we need. We need all of them for protein synthesis to actually work optimally. So these, the reason I have these is because I have discussed this before. I am fasted, so I don't eat before my workout. And I'm a bit of a muscle, what's the word? I said muscle schizophrenic or something last time. I just don't want to lose muscle. So I have around 16 or 18 grams, between 15 to 20 grams is probably the right amount of serving, depending on your body weight. Have these intra workout, they've been proven to reduce muscle protein breakdown, which is what happens when we train. Having these in obviously helps that and also helps the recovery process start straight away. So you want to check the leucine content and the amino acid content of this and you want to try and get at least six grams of leucine per serving. So around 18 grams would probably be right for this bulk powders essential amino acid. Essential, essential amino acids. Again, not essential, but Definitely get these over BCAAs if you are going to spend your money on it. So my next intro workout supplement is Highly Brands Silic Dextrin, which is pretty much a fast acting carb. It bypasses the stomach and gets digested straight away, so it's perfect intro workout. I have around 30 grams. Uh, this one plus the Dextrin by Gold Powders is perfect because there's no bloating, there's no kind of cramping or anything like that, which you can get with things like Dextrose. Uh, so I choose this one. Uh, especially if you are trying to bulk up and eat a few extra carbs in, you can get a 30 gram serving with 30 grams of carbs in, uh, just for some extra calories. And it's also been proven to reduce muscle protein breakdown intra workout as well. So it was Coach Eugene and Mountain Dog, which discussed this in one of Coach Eugene's videos. So a combination of silk dextrin and essential amino acids is perfect intra workout, but again, not essential. Last. Caffeine, so we have three choices of caffeine source, which I normally have. We have coffee, the standard, I think we've got a, a Fortissimo Lungo, is the example today, an espresso. We've got a white monster, and we have the goat MV Pre. So, three different sources, three different strengths, starting off with the coffee, then monster, and then the crazy pre workout. So, caffeine has been proven to help with uh, endurance alertness, um, reducing fatigue, loads of different benefits in terms of in terms of training, in terms of sports performance. So the only times I really have the stronger stuff is when I'm really struggling. So these have got all the loads of other additional ingredients to help you focus, to help the pump, to help you concentrate, to help you perform the best you can. Uh, but we're just focusing on the caffeine today. So when I'm really, really tired, really really fatigued to have a long day or I'm just feeling knackered and I know I've got a deload coming up I'll use this uh, on a day to day basis it's either a coffee or a white monster so dosage wise a uh, normal coffee's probably got around I don't know 90 gram, milligrams of caffeine in it depending on how strong you make it white monster's got around 150 and a full scoop of this has 350 milligrams in that's why it blows your head off. Recommended dosage for caffeine for optimal performance is around three milligrams times your body weight in kilograms. So for me, I'm around 100 kilograms, so 300 milligrams is the right serving. Um, and then recommendations for a day, and uh, the, the recommended guidelines are around 400 milligrams. Obviously, it does depend on your body weight. However, you do build up a tolerance to caffeine, so try and only use it when you need it. For example, a heavy training day, a day that you're really tired, or you've got like a competition or something where you want to kind of take your performance up a notch. 
Uh, I'd recommend if you do take caffeine to cycle it, so say you train for four weeks, try and have at least a, a three to five day period off it to kind of let your body reset. So then when it comes to say, taking a coffee again, you can actually feel it hitting you rather than having to rely on a heavy stim like the MV Pre to get you going. So try and cycle caffeine when you can. So with caffeine, it has a half-life of around five to nine hours depending on the person, depending on the caffeine. So what that means is, say you have a coffee at 12 o'clock, which is say 100 milligrams of caffeine in, at say nine o'clock at night, you will still have 50 milligrams of caffeine in your system. So it can still affect your sleep, especially if you've just started taking it. Uh, so you're quite highly reacted to it. So you've got to be careful with how late in the day you take it. I'd recommend at least nine hours before you go to sleep taking caffeine. Uh, but if you don't need it, don't take it. Right, last few supplements which I personally take for my own reasons. So these are the supplements which I take for my own personal benefit. I've researched them a little bit so I know kind of that they will benefit me personally. Again, that might suit you depending if you've got certain kind of aspects about you. Injuries, for example, is one of the main reasons I take these. Um, which these supplements may benefit you. So, starting off with the big one. So, just started, well I say just, I started taking this in October uh, when I was down at St George's Park uh, rehabbing my ankle injury. So I've had a number of uh, long term injuries, a number of surgeries due to football, uh, paid professional football. So, this is a supplement which I've seen called Soccer Supplement IR19, which is the Injury Recovery Formula. Mixed berry flavour, so just comes in a little, uh, little sachet like this. So what this is designed for is if you've been out for a lot, sit like a long-term injury and you're recovering from it post surgery, uh, so you're not really able to do a lot of physical activity, so you're going to be sedentary quite a lot, which ends up leading to muscle breakdown, and also you need a little bit of extra help recovering. So this supplement is perfect. It talks about and um, specifically designed to assist the speed of recovery for footballers who have suffered, suffered muscle, joint and tendon injuries. Key component of recovery is ability to increase muscle, joint and tendon tissue regeneration. I've had a number of long term injuries. I was out for like two years with uh, knee surgery, so patella tendonitis, I ruptured on my tendons and struggled to get back. I've had an ankle reconstruction. So this supplement, I would recommend for anybody who has had long term injuries, especially for example, ACL injuries. Um, just because your muscles, your tendons are a little bit more prone to that injury and they might be a little bit weaker. So these supplements help you recover a little bit quicker and kind of give them a little bit more support. Also, poor surgery, they're perfect for the reasons that I said before. Um, and the ingredients which they're having, which I'll go into now. So collagen is the first ingredient. So your collagen is what makes up your tendons and ligaments or the connective tissue in your body. So collagen will help regenerate that. Also, I've seen a video on Kaldita's Kaldita's YouTube channel. He talks about supplementing 15 grams of collagen with 50 milligrams of vitamin C, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, about an hour before training to help with tendon or sponginess. So if anybody's got patellar tendonitis, Achilles tendonitis, that might be something that you want to try out. There's also a little tendon jello which you can make at home, which I've made in the past, which has got collagen, which you can help help with that sort of stuff. So next supplement is HMB. So HMB helps helps with preventing muscle wastage. So post surgery you might have say three months where you won't be able to do any sort of exercise. If anybody's had a knee operation or any other sort of operation they'll know what the muscle muscle wastage is like your muscle just disintegrates. So this will help prevent that. It's got a few other things in the main thing as well which I will cover now is Glucosamine sulfate. So if I'm not taking this on a certain day, I'll take this. So glucosamine sulfate is there to help prevent arthritis. So if you do have arthritis, it's not going to benefit you as much as if you don't. So I've thought I'll take this now. One capsule a day, uh, 1,500 milligrams, either from here or either from the supplement, which has been proven to help prevent arthritis down the line. So for me, I've had, like I said, a few ankle injuries, a few knee injuries. So I'm more prone to getting arthritis down the line. So I've started taking this now just to help prevent that. So that's another thing that I take along with this. So if you're a footballer and you've had any long-term injuries, um, try this out. 
I just have it majority on days where I'm doing a lot of impact stuff, for example, a lot of running, a leg, leg stuff, or an intense day of training. So next, I kind of touched on it a little bit before, vitamin C. So vitamin C is a great anti-inflammatory, you find it in blueberries, you find it in a lot of fruit and veg anyway. So supplementing it, the reason that I supplement it is to help with collagen synthesis, which is the repair of tendons, ligaments, etc. So it's been proven to help with that. Uh, there was a study done on some ACL injuries and it found that their injuries recovered actually a bit quicker with supplementing vitamin C. Uh, as well, I take it pre-sleep because there was Dr. Dean's research there and he said that taking a thousand milligrams of vitamin C pre-sleep uh, actually reduces cortisol levels which gets us into the recovery state or the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. Something like that to help me kind of recover, get in a better recovery state before I go to bed. Uh, it's also good for immune support, healthy bones, healthy joints. So if you feel a little bit under the weather, uh, like you get come down with a cold or something, vitamin C will help with that as well. But the main reason I take it is for uh, my injuries which I've had and then my final one for my injuries is turmeric or curcumin. The reason I have this is I've seen a lot of ex-pros who have had long-term injuries supplement with this to help with uh, anti-inflammatory and recovery post-training so I have this again pre-sleep so with my last meal about an hour and a half before I go to bed I have three capsules which is around 3,000 milligrams roughly. Uh, the reason I wouldn't take this I think straight after post-workout is that you want your body to have this natural inflammatory response from training, which is which is good. In terms of muscle, you want this natural uh, inflammation, um, which is our body's response to repair, grow, and become stronger. So try and keep it at least five, four or five hours post-workout. So if you train at night time, I'll probably still take it just for the recovery aspect of it. But three of these little capsules a day, just got them from Amazon. Uh, most of my stuff is from Amazon. This is from a specific website. These are from Bulk Powders, Insight Subs, and then the rest are just Amazon. Uh, so I'll take these for a little bit of additional recovery and because I've got, I get a lot of inflammation in my knee and ankle joints. So they seem to help that. But well, that's pretty much everything. So today's video is a little bit more in depth, a little bit more me talking. Hopefully it's not too long, so I'll cut it up and try and make it short. But I hope it's helped a few years out at home in terms of what supplements to have, what supplements not to, not to have, what to spend your money on, what not to waste your money on, because there is a lot of supplements out there. Uh, but if anybody's got any questions in terms of injuries, um, obviously this aspect of it would be towards injuries. Any questions on any supplements, just drop me a message, drop me a comment. Um, best place to get at me is Instagram. So my link will be for that below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like this style of videos a little bit more, then let me know in the comments, give this video a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Adios.